Hi, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to Udu Experience 2024 and thank you for being here. Today the topic that I'm trying to cover is how the Udu can help all different industries, similar to that furniture industry and in, uh, interior designer industry with the AI solution that we have built up on top of Udu. Uh, the good part with Udu being open source, being flexible, it's easy to customize, first thing. Second, whatever the model that you want to build on top of that, depend upon the industry, depend upon the vertical, it's easy to do. And we have tried to take that advantage and try to cover that. So that's the topic that in next 20 minutes I'm trying to cover, what we have implemented for interior designer industry. A little bit about the company. So company started 12 years back. Uh, globally, we are in 11 countries with the 20 global offices. We are proud partner of Udu in six of those uh, geography. We are a gold partner in US, Canada, Dubai, Saudi, Singapore. Uh, as a company, we are 4,500 people. We recently got merged with entity. So being a part of the entity, now it's a close to 4,500 people globally work for us. We are partner with Udu. We are partner with Adobe, we are partner with Shopify, big commerce and cloud product like uh, Azure, AWS and Amazon. Uh, overall, we have been award winning agency in the operation and geography that we are operating. We have been recognized in Deloitte Fastest 500, Dallas Top 100. Little bit about our Udu experience, that Udu we started relation around six, seven years back. Partnership started five or six years back. Globally, at this point of time, we have close to 300 plus Udu team member working. 200 plus certified, close to 300, 350 Udu ERP implementation that we have done and which we are supporting, migrating, helping them to grow to the next level. A uh, little bit about myself, I am CEO and founder of company, Brainwire, Chintan Shah, been in the industry from a tech for last 20, 22 years, associated with Udu in last six, seven, eight years. And we are very proud to be associated with them and we think that with Udu we can do a lot of magic and one of the magic that we have done at, with the furniture in, interior industry that we are trying to cover up here. Uh, the topic that we are trying to cover is that the obstacles and the challenges that industries face, some of the key features that we have implemented and the kind of result or the output that they got based on that. Like, you know, in an interior designing or the furniture industry, the common problems or the common challenges which comes is like, you know, one is a quotation tool that giving a quotation for an interior designer activities in a fixed price manner, going through the inventory management, like, you know, what type of inventory you have available because most of them are virtual inventory, not a physical inventory because you mix and match four or five components and ultimately that result into the product. Uh, Integrating with the ERP, if you are using any ERP solution, integrating is a pain point which is there. Uh, time consuming process, right? You know, right from the CAD design that you do a CAD design, from that CAD design getting into the quotation and then sending it to the customer in a meaningful way where they can able to read it, make sense and then able to comment on the quotation and then ultimately you move to the uh, closing part of the thing. Uh, efficiency in terms of the supply chain because furnitures and fixtures are also like you know big part of the inventory from the big moving inventory so you want close to your locations the inventory to be managed or the nearby warehouses should deliver so that's where the visibility of the multi-source inventory and at a singular location is something which is very important and then like you know a lot of time quotations are done manual because of that lot of error comes into the picture you miss out one component you missed out something and then ultimately the quotation goes double when the implementation or the entire designing starts. So that's where like, you know, how to make sure that accurately improving with the AI solution that we try to do that. And that is something that we have tried to cover here. So these are some of the challenges that interior designers and the furniture industry that we that face at this point of time. Now, what we have done is a tailor-made solution uh, provided on top of Udu. Uh, developed by Brainwire and what we have done is that we have tried to understand that how the process works, right? So typically interior designers first develop the CAD file and then they got into a 2D or a 3D model which generally makes sense for people like me and you that if you have to do an interior design for our home, so in a meaningful way what it makes sense. So what we try to do is that we allow them to upload the 2D model 
and the CAD file into the Udu system and then try to do an image analysis on top of that with a certain furnitures and fixtures component. Now, of course, we need to supply the image libraries that we are talking about, chairs, furnitures, tables, side table, things like that. So try to do analysis on top of that. Uh, integrating like, you know, AI model to detect the furnitures from the CAD file or from the 2D file that how we can identify the list of components which are available. So as you see the image on the left where there are like, you know, the CAD file image which is there with the 2D modeling, you can see the list of components which are there. We are developing a model where we can identify the each of the component, what are the furnitures, things are, which are available, and then try to make that into the quotation tool so that you don't need to get into a manual process that whether there is a three three sitting sofa is there or two seat, two seater sofa is there, there are 15 chairs, 10 chairs, what we are talking about from a number point of view. And based on that, we can help Udu to generate the quotation. And along with that quotation, if there, there is a vendors or the suppliers who are providing that product, then we at the same time, we can also help to generate the vendor PO as well as soon as the quotation get into confirmation. Also, like, you know, we are trying to do a lot of ML and the machine learning on top of that to make sure that as the product build up, the model get more and more accurate. And now, right now, we, we are proud to say that we are at 75, 80% accuracy in terms of identifying the objects and getting into the, ident mapping that with the product information database within the Udu and try, and try to do the quotation tool out of that. Uh, like, you know, typically, like, you know, that floor plan get uploaded within the Udu system. Once you upload the floor plan, it identify the, like, you know, the options are there within the sales screen that you can upload your floor plan. Once you upload the floor plan, it identifies the line item product by product along with the quantity, gives you option to modify sub or edit, things like that. If, like, you know, the accuracy is a little bit less for one or two components, still there is some manual intervention needed. But what we are trying to do is that trying to automate the process. Earlier part of that, we have seen with a couple of our customers that actually they were doing a modeling then they take the paper, manually start adding the product. At that point of time, they forget that what type of product they thought about it. So again, they have to do back and forth communication. Instead of that, we are trying to simplify this process that you upload your floor plan. Once you upload the floor plan, automatically it identifies the list of product, quantity of the product, gives you audit options, and ultimately you can use that to create your sales order and the quotation tool. Uh, also, like, you know, that, like, you know, vendor PO. So we have seen in the furniture industry that typically you don't own the inventory. You own 5, 10, 15 percent of the inventory. Rest 75, 80 percent is typically third party inventory. Either the manufacturers or the brand people are giving you or you have a suppliers which are giving you. So when you get that type of inventory, typically it also comes with a, that. Uh, what are the kind of vendors that you need to create the POs? So if you have seen in the previous scheme, during that quotation tool, we are trying to show that six of these components has to be purchased from the suppliers or the vendors. That means that when you are doing the quotation and when you are doing the delivery time, you know that what type of margin that you need to keep it up. So this is like, you know, automatic vendor PO creation screen. So as soon as your uh, quotation get confirmed, convert into the sales order, how you can make sure that the vendor PO can be created and the workflow can be set that you want to have a manual intervention for the people to create the, uh, send the PO to the vendors, or you want to have automated vendor PO goes out as per like, you know, their expectation. Third thing which comes is the tracking the product availability, which is very important that if you can identify the component, if you map that with your product, if you know the uh, fulfillment cycle and where the product are, tracking of the product status, and uh, when it's going to be get available, and how you make sure that, like, you know, that right accurate timeline is given to your consumers that when this will be available. At the same time, when the installation can be done, because in the furniture industry, it's also not about the product, but along with the product, you also need a team which can do the installation as well. So mapping all of those things are important. So that's where, like, you know, the product tracking is something which is key aspect of it. And we are trying to map that AI solution, which generally that from the 2D file get into the quotation tool, become the sales order, from the sales order, help you to create the vendor PO and tracking of the delivery and the fulfillment aspect of it, like, you know. 
AI models. So there are certain AI models which are available in the market, right? And we can definitely try a lot of them. So we have looked at YOLO, we have looked at SSD, we have looked at fast RCN, and then ultimately we'll end up with a mask RCN from the model point of view, and that was the model which generally allows you to identify the object within the CAD file and identify that, and then ultimately map that with your product database that you have it out. So, like, you know, this was something that a lot of research was done on certain model, and then we came with that model. Second is going to be the training model, right? The AI model is not about just identifying. It's also about training, that you continuously need to keep your training your model, and you need to make sure that it's going to keep improving, that maybe on a first five image, we're not able to identify the sofa or a chair, fair enough, how to make sure that we train the model so that next time they're able to identify. So that is something that we have tried to do it. So earlier, I think when we started implementing, for our first customer, our accuracy was close to around 45, 50%. At this point of time, we have reached to around 70, 75%, and our target is to go above 80, 85. That will be the correct model. So that's where we have used Detection 2 by PyTorch, and that's the model that we are using from a training model point of view. Uh, also like you know, testing and performance and, and optimization, that is something which is key aspect of it. So continuously we are making sure that we test this model. At the same time we are learning the mistakes that we are able to find out that some object we are not able to identify. Certain object which we are supposed to not identify, we are over identifying those things. So we are making sure that we are optimizing that and testing it out. So that's a continuous thing that we are doing it out and we are using mean average uh, precision that's where like you know that precision is coming from identifying the object go to the level and making sure that like you know getting it to the accuracy so we have reached to a stage where we can from the 2d image we are actually identifying how many chairs are there and based on that you're trying to do that at this point of time the model is like you know if there are different type of chairs available so that's where there is a little bit of struggle that like you know identifying and componentize those two different chairs but that's where also we are working with a model in this case, the 2D and the 3D model from the manufacturers for the devices and, and I mean for the product are very important. So that's where like, you know, we worked with Minoti and a couple of other suppliers where we get that 3D and a 2D object and trying, trying to map that with a part of the furniture components which are there. Like you know, generally what we do is that we take a 2D image, we develop different type of set, data set. So we do a grayscale, we do it with a, like, you know, uh, component-based modeling, we identify the components, separate it out. We also giving them a flavor that if they want to see with the color, without a color, in the grayscale. So all those type of data set that we are doing. So we take a one image and generally we do a 10x different type of images, which we use it from slicing and dicing point of view for our AI model and from analysis point of view. And like, you know, of course, like, you know, that lot of cool things that you can do it with it. Once you can identify the model, once you can identify the object, and once you can got, then of course, like, you know, what we are doing now that you upload your image based on that image, we can identify the list of components which are there, and that components we are trying to map with your product or the list of product which is there in your product information system, like table, chair, sofa, things like that. And we, we are also trying to mark the demarcation lines within that just to make sure that like you know we able to identify the components and the list of components mapped with your products data set uh, also like you know quotation tool is something which is very important so when we are getting into a quoting tool we are trying to do a preview as well so that as you get into a different line item it will tell you cor corresponding to this line item which uh, product from that images which are there and which you are trying to cover that from a quotation point of view. So ultimately it helps you that you are not missing out on any component, also give you a better visual impact on that. Right now we are doing at a quotation level. Our plan for the future is that as the quotation goes to the customer, when they are looking at the quotation and they go through line by line item, we want to give them an interactive feature where they can see the components on the images as they are going through the quoting tool, just to give them the real time flavor of the product and things like that. Like, you know, expected outcomes, like, you know, so far as I was speaking about, like, you know, we started with 40, 45, 50%, now we are at 75% from accuracy and efficiency point of view. But what we have tried to change in the industry, basically is that, like, you know, the quotation were manual, lot of errors were coming in the quotation tool, real-time inventory tracking was not available, 
you don't know when you are going to do the fulfillment of it. So this is something that we are trying to cover and trying to solve in the industry that like, you know, and the expected output that we have seen is like, you know, one is that quotation tool is like, you know, accurately improved in terms of your quotation, in terms of your tooling, in terms of your not missing out any component or over coating on certain component part of aspect of it. Also automated tracking of your inventory, fulfillment, also which are them are vendor fulfillment, which of them are your own inventory and where they are located in the part of the warehouses, whether it's in the Belgium warehouse or Netherlands warehouse to make sure that like, you know, the also the optimizing your delivery schedule as well. Uh, also like, you know, catalog and mapping those catalog with your product. That is also very important that like, you know, each of in the furniture industry, that same product can be written with the multiple names and things like that. So how to make sure that accurately you map from the image to that product is something that we have tried to do that. And also at the same time, it's like, you know, just giving a better customer engagement flavor, right? If I'm a salesperson, interior designer, in front of the customer, developing the quotation tool from that image, it gives that type of thing where customer can feel com confident about the technology, efficiency, delivery, things like that. Uh, so, I mean, we have currently implemented this for two of our customers, uh, one in US, uh, New York, uh, DDC New York, one in uh, Middle East, which is Interior 360, and uh, fairly successful with what we have done so far. Definitely there is a lot to do and a lot to catch up from uh, uh, next uh, level point of view. But this was something that like you know, how AI can be powered within the Udu system is something that we're trying to achieve. Uh, considering Udu's open architecture, scalability, easy to integrate from a customization point of view, easy to develop the model on top of that, and then all third-party components can be integrated. That's the power that Udu bring, and that's why we are in love with Udu so much that you can do experiment, you can develop the model on top of that, and when you look at industry like that, traditionally this industry has run manually for hundreds of years. Now, like you know, the satisfaction that we get is that how we are converting that industry into a fully automated or a semi-automated solution, moving towards the fully automated solution, where completely the technology and digitization can be used at its peak for this industry. Yeah, these are some of our customers globally that we have worked with uh, on a various capacity at a various different level. Uh, we have done some large UDU implementation, like you know, 400 stores, point of sale, point of sale rail, rail out, 17 countries, UDU rollout with a consolidation module, which UDU has recently launched and we are very like, you know, excited to see that to get integrated. Uh, yeah, this is like, you know, a brief on what we do, some of our customers and some of the things that solution that we have tried to bring here. Uh, happy to deep dive into any questions, anything that we have. Our, we are in this uh, hall, our booth is A10, so if you guys have any questions, want to talk to our expert, get some more idea about the product, about the AI solution, some other thing, happy to have a conversation on the same. Thank you, Shintan, for this very interesting talk. Um, for now, I'm just open the, the pad. I'm waiting for questions to pop in. Fair enough. So I'm going to start with the beginning of the question. Sure. Um, how much experience do you have in retail and how can this be used? So, I mean, retail from an industry point of view, we live and breathe and die into that industry. So, of course, we have a lot of expertise into that. Uh, probably every retail show around the globe, BrainWire is present in some or other capacity. We are partnered with Udo, we are partnered with Adobe, we are partnered with uh, Shopify, Big Commerce. So, that way, we are very deep from uh, retail from an industry point of view. When we look at this AI solution, I'm, I'm sure the modeling of the AI can be used definitely a big time into a retail industry. Whether we talk about uh, a clothing, whether we talk about uh, shoes, whether we talk about lifestyle product, 
I'm sure like, you know, each and every aspect of it, something can be used in that. Uh, even in the furniture retail industry, this can be used. So we are looking at developing a mobile app for a consumer where they can build their own home, they can build their own interior designing by selecting the components. And as they select the component, the real-time quotation tool start coming up so they know that what their budget looks like and they can re remove or add something. And ultimately, once they are ready with their final thing, it can go for the quotation, things like that. So we are looking at that, that how we can get that power to the interior designer, from interior designer to the consumer. Thank you. What is the maximum efficiency you expect the AI recognition model to reach? Would it reach 100%? Uh, I doubt on that, and I'm not going to say that it's going to reach 100% for sure, no. So typically it's a journey that we have to look at it at this point of time by looking at all different type of AI models which are available. I think 75, 80% is a good accuracy number. If you can go up to 85, that's a great. So we always keeping in this in mind that there is a manual intervention that we are trying to do that. And each of our AI modeling when we implement, we are also making sure that there is a closing loop from a learning model point of view. So training, testing and optimization is something which is very important that whatever components, object, or something that we're not able to identify, make sure that you identify manually, give that as an input to the model so that in the future, the model try to become more and more efficient. So I think 85, 90% will be a great number to reach. Uh, above that, like, you know, I think the AI is still uh, evolution phase which is going on. So maybe in two, three, five years from now, technology goes to that advanced level, maybe we can reach to 95%, but I doubt that it will reach up to 100%. That's my personal opinion, but yeah, 80, 85%, 90 is a good number. It's already a good number, I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what was the process to calculate or identify the ROI with this client to invest in a new process that, rarely, that people rarely use? I agree. So, I mean, One was like, you know, we did implemented this for a store in a New York, Manhattan, DDC, New York, right? So when you look at a store in Manhattan, you look at it from a branding point of view. They talk about it. I mean, they are the industry leader in terms of the furniture and how interior design works and how the process should work, industry should work. They are distributors for minority and things like that. So where the each sofa costs you like 60, 80, 100 grand from a cost point of view. So of course they are advanced in terms of what they want to do it out their customer audience are different, right? So where you want to have an interior designer going with a quotation tool, coating it out in front of the customer, show them the model, give them the accurate information. I think some of those things were important. So I will say that ROI point of view, maybe like, you know, 15, 20% of ROI, they got it in terms of the accurately coating, knowing their uh, delivery schedules, how many of that components are vendor PO and how many of that are available within the warehouse. So those were some of the important real-time factors that they're able to do it when they're having a conversation with the customer. But from a customer experience point of view, I think that has increased like, you know, around 50, 60% the satisfaction from the customer point of view that you have an interior designer sitting with you, identifying what we want to do it out. Once they finalize that, you immediately get a quotation. Earlier it used to happen that, okay, I, we have identified, okay, let me go back to the office, take a couple of days, come back to you with the quotation and all. So that way, like, you know, that, that is something which has increased drastically, like, you know, from a satisfaction point of view. Okay, thank you very much. Perfect. See you next time. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.